Hey, Jamal. Um, how, did, how did you feel about your cornerback play uh, week one, and how much different is this going to be this week, obviously? I mean, you guys didn't have to go against Tylen Wallace last year. How much has he changed things? Yeah, so answer the first question. Uh, week one was week one. Um, not necessarily pleased with, I think, some of the spots in which we ended up. Not necessarily just in corner play, but in pass coverage in general. Um, definitely want to snug up on some things, and so – We'll be working to make sure that we are cleaner um, on, obviously, those things. I, I'm not going to give away the answers to the test, but uh, definitely want to improve. We know that the biggest improvement usually comes between week one and week two, um, but we, we plan on improving every week. And so that's what we're going to continue to do um, as, as we, we go to work today, really. Jamal, so in, in terms of Alonzo, mm -hmm. was it odd coaching him? I guess, you know, now he's at safety, so at least he's not in your room all the time. Does oh. that help a little bit? And, and the recruitment, I mean, what, what were you telling him? I and mean, he was making a pretty big jump up from, from New Hampshire to West yeah. Virginia. So how'd that work? Yeah, Alonzo, I mean, he, he was always a kid who was, was intrinsically motivated, always um, sending his tape, asking for help, asking for advice, and, and obviously being – as far as he was, um, the, the modern technology has allowed us to kind of help him and coach him along the way. And uh, from a young child, I can remember him calling and begging to have our games on TV and begging his un my uncle, his dad, to bring him up to come and watch. And he had just always had an infatuation with the game of football, which is somewhat rare um, coming from where he's, he's coming from. And so he continued to fight the fight. If you know his story, you know that there's been quite a few stops in between um, obviously, his younger years in here, um, and so just in, you know, following his 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 story, I got a chance to see a few clips, and I'm thinking, holy cow, this kid can actually, he's not he he doesn't just have the last name, but he can actually go, and uh, you know, he he obviously had some displeasure in what was going on at the place in which he was at, um, and decided to leave that situation, and uh, we were fortunate enough to have him, and he's worked his butt off, um, not just you know when he got here, but even prior uh, to get to this spot. And so it's pretty cool to see. Um, in terms of coaching him, um, I can't take credit for that. Obviously, schematically, we talked through some things. Coach Wright's done a great job with him. Um, and it's, it's pretty cool to be able to turn a family member loose to, to what I consider another family member and, and have him work his magic. And so those two have done well. Hopefully, they continue to, to get better as the season goes on. Curious about your thoughts on their tempo and how they can, you know, uh, just run a normal play if you're on, if you're not lined up and, and hit you for a big play. What right. what do you have to do with with Jordan to um, to, to yeah. communication wise yeah, yeah. and how much help do you get from the guys above uh, for yeah. your eyes above to to be able to help you with that? Yeah, well, tempo. I mean, they tempo for a reason, right? They want to catch you. They want to catch you off guard. They want to catch your eyes in the wrong spots. They want to catch you miss misaligned, and so. Our onus has always been, our, our emphasis, I should say, has always been to obviously go through your every play ritual as fast as you can. That means get the call, right, and get aligned, know your assignment, get your eyes and your keys and play ball. And so although that seemed very simple, right, and the air conditioned and you and I, are, we got this big old screen in front of me and the nice lights and all, um, that, that, that can go awry when, when it's, it's in a tempo situation within a live football game. And so for, for us, we've just got to be really disciplined in that, in that ritual. And um, it, it's, it's going to be one of those things where it won't come as a surprise. We know that they obviously work a fast tempo offense. And so we've just got to continue to stress and harp on our kids that, you know, we've got to get a line and we've got to be ready to meet, that, meet the match. Curious, is it, um, is it identifying a personnel, a part of that component of that too? Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the change in personnel actually helps you. Because the, the ref the ref stands over the ball, which slows it down, um, and so it's not necessarily the personnel that's IDing the formations and getting the line um, more so than that. Now, obviously, if there's a change of personnel, that gives us some time to do what we need to do, and um, all things are even there. And even in that, you don't have a bunch of time. So, um, you know, tempo creates its own issues. I think it's run around the country for the same reasons, and uh, defenses have to do the same thing in order to counteract that, which is to know know your stuff, get a line, and play. So Neil um, talked about even going back and watching some of these backup quarterbacks' high school tape just to kind of see them in case that they play. Right. And I was just wondering, when you watch tape of a quarterback, are you just kind of trying to figure out 
what throws he can make, like what his limitations are and things like that? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're really just trying to get the more of the physical skill set. Obviously, what he's being asked to do in, in college is going to be a little bit different than what he's asked to do in high school. And so you're not necessarily looking at the scheme as opposed to what, what he's capable of, whether it be running, uh, whether it be arm strength, whether it be decision making, whether it be um, ability to see down the field, what, what have you. You're just trying to gather information. And it's like anything else, right? If, if you don't have information, you've got to go dig and try to get it in, in every avenue in which you can in order to build a portfolio in which you, you feel good about using to defend them. And so that's, that's really what we've done throughout the week. I didn't know that coach kind of gave our, gave our secrets away, but I, I guess it is what it is there. He cussed the checks. Rotation for you at corner. Uh, do you feel that you're comfortable moving four guys total? Yeah. Yeah. Is there a fifth? What's, yeah. your, what's your comfort level at your rotation at cornerback? Yeah. Uh, you know, you want to play all the guys that, that you feel you can, you're comfortable with winning with. You know, and I think for me, right now, we've got three in Jackie Matthews, Dre Miller, and Nick Troy, who um, have shown the ability to compete at this level. Uh, Nick Troy obviously getting a meaningful time last year and actually doing really well in those spots. Um, that helps some things. And then Dre Miller is a guy who came on strong during camp. And, uh, you know, first game jitters, um, I think, got some of him. But at the end of the day, he's a competitor. He's had a great, um, you know, week of preparation coming into it. And so he'll be a guy that will be seen early and often. And then Jackie Matthews is a guy who um, we also feel is getting better all the while. And uh, both of those guys are competitors and, and will give everything that they have in them uh, to make a play for the Mountaineers. It's my job to put them in a position to get that done. And so that's that's what we're working on this week and here in about 30 minutes. Go ahead, John. If you're a former defensive player, you coach defense, and you've got to uh, prepare for a mobile quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, whether he's hurt or healthy, mm -hmm. um, there's still a lot of time you got to devote to him just because of his unique skill set. Right. Um, how you go about it and how much time can you devote when you've only got so much time anyway to get, get the guys ready? Yeah, that's what makes it tough, right? I mean, I think – emulating that guy in practice is really, really tough. You know, the, it, it, there's no question that a dual threat quarterback presents its own problems. And and he's been a lead at both running and throwing the football at times. And so that's that's a problem in itself as well. Um, you know, even the fact that he's hobbled, it's still you're still forced to have to um, work to defend it and really prepare to defend it. And so um, that 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 adds, adds its own issues in itself. Um, but for what we know is you build everything with rules, right? And as long as, as, as you stick to your rules and your sound, um, usually that puts you in a pretty, pretty good position to at least minimize the damage, uh, whether it be through the air or on the ground. And uh, so our thing as coaches is to make sure that, you know, we, we minimize the amount that we're doing, allow them to play fast, allow them to see what they see, key diagnose it, and, and, and see ball and get ball. And so for us, that's going to be a big part of this week's game plan. So, Jamal, your thoughts on uh, Daryl Porter. Um, how has he come along? I mean, mm -hmm. obviously very young, but right. getting thrown into the fire a little bit. So, what are your yeah. thoughts? Yeah, we, we wanted to get him some early action in camp. He was actually probably our, our top uh, interception getter. I think he, he led the team in terms of takeaways. And so, he showed the, the early ability to go get the ball when it's in the air to be able to track it and have natural ball skills. Like any other freshman, there's still some development that's there that's, that's needed. Uh, he continues to develop himself. I will say that I do feel he's he's come along probably a lot faster than than most freshman court cornerbacks I've had, um, and and is really a sharp kid, very cerebral, never too high, never too low, um, and and somewhat of a sponge in a sense. And so excited about him for the near future. Um, he'll be a guy that you may possibly see as well. Um, he's got to have a great week of pre uh, preparation, and um, he obviously knows that, and he's he's worked to worked his ass off to get it done. 